finally, another Dinka review. You know, I have reviewed a, a fine product of Dinka since, well, the perennial review back in Liberty City. Here's on the docket today, we have the OG Dinka Jester, before it became a discount mark for Supra. This is a 2016 Dinka Jester. For this review, I'll be covering both the Dinka Jester, like the regular version, and the race car version. While they both look identical, I can assure you the race car version is much more improved than its twin. I couldn't really find any good songs from 2016 I wanted to sing, so um, just enjoy me uh, saying that, I guess. There'll be a song in this video though, don't you worry. A Japanese hybrid electric sports car with a front end design that looked like an angry grin might be too whimsical for some, but with a 4 liter V6 engine, 420 horsepower, and a top speed of 180 miles per hour, the Dink Adjuster still packs a serious punchline. So, for the first segment of review, I'll just be reviewing the standard Jester. The Jester, despite its looks, is actually a sports class. This kind of always baffled me when I first started playing the game, but when I realized what the car was based off of, it made more sense. Now you're probably thinking, huh, why does the OG GTA 5 Jester look so much different from the Jester Classic, or in turn the Jester RR? Well, technically, because in San Andreas, that gesture looked more like a Mark IV Super. But other than that, I, I can't really answer that question. In my head, space of the GTA lore, I can only assume Dinka asked Karen to basically rebad some of their models, kind of like how Honda used to take the old Isuzu Rodeo in the 90s, and in return, Isuzu sold Honda's first and Odyssey as the Isuzu Oasis. This is just the way I see it. As for Jester RR, uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Okay, so now it's time for history. Now, I kind of already discussed the history in my Jester Classic review from a couple years back, but I'll just give a brief overview for those of you who have seen it. If you want to watch my Jester Classic review, you can watch it here. In the beginning, San Andreas, the Jester resembled a fourth generation Toyota Supra. When the gesture finally returned to GTA 5, it now resembled an accurate NSX? Yeah, it's, that's kind of weird. It's kind of like how in my old Dinka Plus review, where the thing had evolved from being a minivan to a hatchback. I'd like to think that Dinka had some kind of restructuring after the 2000s, except not back with like Mitsubishi with that weird Eclipse crossover. Ugh. So. The gesture is based on a second gen NSX. So far, they've only had two generations one from the 90s and one from the 2010s. Granted, the first generation had a couple faces over the years. Like, for example, they, they dropped the pop of headlights for safety reasons. But we'll be focusing on the second generation. The second generation Acura NSX, or NC1 according to Wikipedia, is still in production. Sort of? It was launched in 2016 and is still being sold in limited numbers to this day. The NC1, unlike its predecessor, is an all-wheel drive hybrid electric sports car. It features a 3,493cc JNC twin turbocharged piece making an impressive 573 horsepower or 602 on the Type S model. It features a hybrid electric motor system that assists in propelling the vehicle, and all of this is paired to a 9-speed dual-clutch transmission. Jeez, this sounds like something out of Hyperfront 2077. Um, but wait, but what's that sound? Okay, 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 that's enough. I get it. Thanks to those electric motors, the NC1 can reach a 0 to 60 time in an astonishing 2.7 seconds. And the top speed rated at 191 miles per hour. Sheesh! 
This thing makes the Civic Type R feel like a go-kart in comparison. It makes my little blue Civic feel like a lawnmower. Damn. Alright, back on track. <laughs> Get it? Because because of the car? Anyway, according to in-game adverts, the Jester features a 4.0 liter V6 making 420 horsepower. I can't tell if that was an intentional Wii joke or not. Hmm. Very clever, Rockstar. The specs line up pretty nicely with the NZ1. The NZ1 features a 3.5 with a V6 making a bit more power. Under the hood though, it's a different story. It's a V8. I'm sure, I'm certain, if Rockstar had a V6 model, they would have slapped one in there. But no. Also, the website states the 0 to 60 time is 4.5 seconds. That might be true for a fully modified gesture, but for a stock one, it's actually 5.4 seconds. This is achieved thanks to the gesture's all-wheel drive layout with a 2080 split between the front and rear wheels. Also, gesture cannot go 180 miles per hour. It can only go up to 120. Though apparently, Brohi122 measured it about 118-ish, so... Give or take, I guess. So what are my first impressions of the car? It's fast. Really fast. But in a technical course, it needs a bit of skill to rank. One wrong move, or one stupid NPC car, and you're done. I did notice some instances where the car would understeer at a high speed corner. Overall, the car handles and drives quite well, and according to Brohi one Cougar's video on the Sports Clash Cars of 2020, the gesture got 13th place out of 70 cars. I'd say it's definitely still a contender in racing GT Online. Now to talk about the race car version of the gesture, and it looks virtually identical to the standard model. But it does have some beautifully, beautifully painted red stock wheels, and a custom race livery as well. In fact, I liked the livery so much I actually downloaded a uh, vinyl design for the Acura NSX and Forge Horizon 4 to make it look like the uh, Tinka Jester. Besides, without the livery, it'd be just a normal Jester. The stats also remain relatively the same as the Jester as far as top speed goes. Both models have the same 2080 split all wheel drive layout, and both are paired to a six, six speed transmission. However, the race car variant improves on the original car in almost every way, and it's only 110k more than the race model. I mean, the regular model. Why, why did I type down my screen? Son of a gun. It offers faster acceleration, improved handling and cornering ability, and more responsive handling as well. This makes the race car gesture a pretty solid and well-rounded car for the sports class racing in GT Online. According to the Brogy, this car also ranked 13th place in that 2020 video I mentioned earlier. And yes, I said 13th for the other car, I meant 17th, I corrected myself in the video there. I'm also so surprised to see people this car in modern GT Online, so if I just tell you something, then I don't know what will. So, with that being said, honestly, both cars are a solid investment for any GT Online player. Great, a great well-rounded car for a decent price, and a way better option than that torque steer nightmare Blista Conjo. Until next time, I'll see you all soon. Peace out.